Hello and welcome back to a quick look. I'm Zoe Jewell and today I will be ranking Taylor Swift albums from worst to best. That's right. I will be sharing my very own personal Taylor Swift ranking from 10 up to one. This is a very challenging exercise, very personal exercise, but one that I am very excited to do, to take you all on this journey from 10 to one. I do wanna say before I get into the ranking that I genuinely like every single Taylor Swift album. There is not a Taylor Swift album out there that I am not a fan of. In fact, if I were to rate every album out of five stars, every album would get at least three stars minimum. Okay. So I want to put that out there before we get started, because even though an album is at 10 and is technically my least favorite of the 10 albums, it doesn't mean I don't like it and that I'm not a fan of the album. I think mean, that's a very important groundwork to lay out before we get started, because I don't want people thinking that I am not, not a fan of, of these albums. I definitely am. She can't, she, she's incapable of making a bad album. Let's be honest. I also want to say too, that these rankings are subjective. There's no right answer. There's no wrong answer. It's just my own personal feelings and my own personal r ranking. I'm sure that if I saw your ranking of, of your favorite Taylor Swift albums, I probably wouldn't agree with them either. So just remember that if you disagree with my ranking. Okay, let's jump right in with my number 10 album, which is Lover. Now, this was really tough for me because again, as I mentioned, I love every single Taylor Swift album, or I should say, I, I really like every Taylor Swift album. So deciding what to put as the bottom was a challenge. And it was especially a challenge because Lover has some of my favorite Taylor Swift songs of all time. In fact, I think Cruel Summer is definitely in my top five Taylor Swift songs of all time, potentially even top three. That song is an all timer. It is so incredibly good. And it has a number of other songs that I really love, like Death by a Thousand Cuts and Cornelia Street. I think he knows is such a great song. But unfortunately, when I had to kind of make this ranking, what I realized was while Lover has some of my favorite songs, it also has a lot of my least favorite songs. I don't love me. I know that's not like a, I feel like there's a lot of other people who don't love that song and I still don't understand why Taylor put it out as the first single from this album, but it's just, it's not a great song. And that definitely brings the album down for me a little bit. I also don't love London Boy. I don't really love You Need to Calm Down. I don't really like It's Nice to Have a Friend. So while there are like very high highs on Lover, there are also for me some low lows. I also think in defense of Lover, we didn't get, I think, the full Lover cycle because it came out in 2019 obviously the pandemic happened and then we got folklore so i don't even think we really had enough time to fully appreciate the lover moment but that's why it's at number 10 for, for me okay moving on to number nine which is her debut album taylor swift here's the thing i think a lot of people when they do these rankings they they default to putting her debut album at number 10 because it's the most sort of removed from her other albums. It's it's the pure country album. It's different than her other albums. But when going through the track list, this album is full of bops. Picture to Burn, Should Have Said No, Our Song, Tim McGraw, Tear Drops on My Guitar, Mary's Song. I mean, it's it's crazy that she wrote this album when she was 16 years old and it has so many elite songs. It's truly, it's truly impressive. Is it as deep lyrically as her other albums that are to come? 
No. And and that's kind of why I have it in this in this nine spot, because there are some songs that you can tell are definitely written by a 16 year old girl, which is no shade, but it's just not as it's not as developed, shall we say, as as her other music to come is. So that's why I have it at nine. But it's hard to deny how incredible the album is with so many great songs. And again, the fact that she wrote it as a teenager, I mean, just goes to show you how talented she really is. All right, number eight, Evermore. Now, I know this is probably going to be very unpopular because I know there's a lot of people out there that love Evermore, okay? But I really feel like you're either a folklore girl or you're an Evermore girl. Like, I feel like anyone listening to this or boy, you know, person in general. I feel like everyone watching this now, you have one that you prefer over the other. And Evermore for me just, it didn't quite hit for me like it did for everybody else. Ivy is one of my all time favorite songs ever. That song is a masterpiece. I stand that song forever. Love it. I like Champagne Problems a lot. Gold Rush is such a great song. Willow is great, Nobody No Crime, Marjorie. Like there's some really beautiful, beautiful songs on Evermore. But then there's some songs that just like don't quite work for me. I Controversial opinion, hot take perhaps, but I'm not the biggest fan of Tis the Damn Season. I don't really like Closure. Like while Ivy is like this standout for me on the album, I also love Willow. That That's a great song. The rest of the album, there's nothing else that's like really bringing it for me to the next level. I think it's a good album. I don't think it's a great album. So that's why I have it at eight. All right, number seven, Midnight's. I feel like every one of these that I drop, I feel like it's controversial. (laughs) But here's why I have Midnight's at seven. This album has so many great songs. Karma, You're On Your Own Kid, Lavender Haze, Antihero, Mastermind, like so many, so many nuggets of just brilliance in this album. However, for me personally, there isn't the song that just like stands out above the rest that is like elite level for me personally. Again, there's like... I I like the album as a whole, and I think it's really good top to bottom, but there's nothing that I feel I would put, like, I don't know that I would pick any Matt or any Midnight song in my, put any like song in my top 10 list of Taylor Swift songs of all time. And I feel like because of that, that's why I have it at number seven. Honestly, this ranking might change tomorrow, but for today, Midnight's is at seven. Sorry if that's controversial. Okay, number six, Speak Now, Taylor's version, obviously. I will admit something. I probably have this album higher than most people, though I think there's a lot of people that really love Speak Now, but I think I have it so high because this album came out when I was in high school, and I just have this it, it, it brings back a lot of nostalgia. A lot of memories for me are associated with this specific album. And I think if you have, I think anyone watching, if when you think back to certain like albums that you listened to as a kid or something, you just have like an extra, there's just, there's just something extra that um, makes you just have this soft spot for it. And I feel like that's how I feel about Speak Now. But also there's like no skips on Speak Now. Really, truly, top to bottom, an excellent album. Mine, Mean, Enchanted, Sparks Fly, Long Live, Long Live, Back to December, Dear John, Last Kiss. Like, it is lyrically top tier. Some of my favorite songs of all time are on this album. Enchanted, Sparks Fly, Mean is one of the one of her best. It's just so good. It's so, so good. And I feel like when she re-released Speak Now, Taylor's version, it like, also I like found a new, it almost like reinvigorated my love for the album all over again. 
I just think it's so good. I think it's so great. And again, like there's just nothing on that album that I'm like, eh, I don't like that song. And I feel like that's, that's the sign that it's a great album. So speak now, number six. Okay. Reputation is at five. This one's interesting because Reputation for me was a grower. When it first came out, like I think for a lot of people, it was a little bit like, wait, whoa, this is this is interesting. This is different. We haven't heard Taylor Swift put music out like this before. And so I didn't really love it when it first came out. I liked it fine. But like if you would have asked me back in 2017 when this album came out, it would have been lower on my list. But over time, and I feel like for a lot of people, this is the case. It has just grown and grown and grown and grown. And now it is truly, I think it's like a masterpiece. <laughs> I think it is so, it's like so bold. It's so different, obviously, than anything she's ever done before. Again, very few skips for me on this album. I think it's just, it it was such a swing for her because again, it wasn't like anything she'd ever done before. But I I absolutely love it. I think it is so great. Um, The only reason it's not higher for me on the list is because Again, there's not like that one song that stands out for me above the rest. To me, Reputation, the reason I love it so much and why I think it's so good is because it's so, it's so sonically cohesive. It, it, it's like the perfect album. Like everything just works together so well. Um, and so that's why it's at five right in the middle. Okay. Now we're into the top four. So this is when stuff's getting real. Okay. Okay. Number four, Fearless, Taylor's version. This album changed my life, seriously. I was a Taylor fan prior to Fearless. I liked her debut album, but this was the album that made me a Swifty, okay? I was 15 when she put out the song 15, so that was major for me. I felt very connected. And I just felt like it was the first time when I listened to music as a teenager where I felt like an artist was speaking to me directly and I could completely relate my life to what she was writing about in her music. It was, I could just like draw so many parallels and I and I felt so connected to her through this album. It also has to me elite, elite songs, songs that like I mentioned before are definitely in my top 10 Taylor songs of all time. You Belong With Me, Love Story. I also am a huge fan of Fearless, the song. I I think that song is so great. White Horse is amazing. Tell Me Why. That's the way I loved you or the way I, I, I loved you. Like those songs are just really good. And again, I can't deny the nostalgia part of it and how meaningful it was to me when I was 15. But... And this is the album, too, that, like, really changed Taylor's life and Taylor's career. So it's hard to not take into account the, like, cultural significance of this album and how how big it made her as a star going forward. So love, love this album. Love Fearless will always, will always be a fan. Number four. All right. Number three. I mentioned this before. You're either an Evermore girl or a folklore girl, and I am a folklore girl. Number three is Folklore. Okay, first things first. I don't know that there's a skip on Folklore, top to bottom. Incredible. Invisible String is a masterpiece. I love that song so much. I could listen to it every single day of my life. I'm obsessed. But then you also have My Tears, Ricochet, Peace, Betty, August, Cardigan. I mean, it's just... And again, much like Reputation, this was such a pivot for Taylor. It was so unique. It was so different. It was a surprise release. Like it just, I think it caught us all off guard, but it was so special. And I think again, like music finds you when you need it the most. And I feel like Folklore found me when I needed it the most. And so I will always, I will always love this album. And I just, I I feel like it's an album I can put on in the car, maybe when I'm working, just wanting something to listen to that's like great music and I'll put it on and I will not even skip. I won't touch it. I'll just let it play. And it's perfection from start to finish, honestly. 
Okay, number two, 1989, Taylor's version. Pop Perfection. This album, when you look up the dictionary, Pop Perfection, this album shows up. It is, again, I keep saying this, it's a masterpiece. Style is, I think, her best pure pop song that she's ever written. That riff at the beginning of that song is sensational. And it's just an all-time great. Out of the Woods, Blank Space is so fantastic. Wildest Dreams, Clean, Clean. It's all so good. And while there are some songs that I don't love as much as others, the highs are so incredibly high on this album that it has to be number two. Because, and I also think, much like Fearless changed Taylor's career, this album, I think, like took her to the next level. It was a reinvention for her in so many ways. And I feel like there were a lot of people out there who maybe were not Taylor Swift fans prior to this album coming out, who then became Taylor fans once they heard it. Like it just, it's a cultural touch point, I think, for a lot of people, especially in the music world. And it's hard to deny how impactful it really was. So love it, number two. And if you've, you know, process of elimination, <laughs> number one album for me is Red, Taylor's version. I cannot deny that I think Red is number one because of All Too Well, both the original version and the 10 minute version. All Too Well is my favorite song of all time, not just Taylor Swift song, favorite song, period of all time. I've loved this song since it came out. It is the best song ever written. It's a masterpiece. It's lyrically, every bit of it is just so incredible. So I can't deny that that's a major, major, major reason why this album is number one for me personally. But I also love, and this might be a little bit different than what I've said about the other albums, but I really like how sonically diverse the album is. I feel like you can go to Red and you can get kind of all the different things you love about Taylor Swift, which is her incredible pop radio, just like earworm hits. I Need Were Trouble, 22, all that stuff. You can also get her more kind of like country stuff. I feel like Begin Again has a lot of kind of country influence. You get some rock, sort of like more guitar driven songs with Holy Ground and State of Grace. You also get some more of like her singer songwriter style music, I think with Treacherous, All Too Well as well. So you just, you get so many different things with the album. I think it just showcases how how incredibly like diverse her songwriting ability is and that she can do everything. Um, and I just think it is so, so, so good. I I could listen to Red every single day. If someone said to me, you can bring three albums to a, you know, a, a a, a desert island like red is one of those albums i would bring i just i love it so much i think it is such a great album it was robbed of album of the year if you know you know and it's number one for me now would this will this change maybe there's always a chance that, that a new taylor album will come out and i will love it so much and that will become number one maybe something else over time will work its way up the rankings always possible but for now, today, red is number one, despite the fact that I'm in a reputation sweatshirt. But, you know, I love it too. All right, guys, that is my Taylor Swift album ranking. Please let me know in the comments what your ranking is. I'd love for you to share your, your 10 to 1 how you feel about these albums, maybe what you think of my ranking. Um, share all your thoughts, all your feelings in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.